What's up, everyone? Coach Tony here. Welcome back to the free weekly live training here in our UC Admission Secrets Facebook group. Super excited to connect with you all here today. If you're watching this live, it is March 26, 2024, the final free training of March. Okay, we're going to roll into April next time we connect. Super, super pumped to chat with you all today. It's a really fun time, right? Fun time in the admissions journey. Uh, we have some uh, really quick in the poll. L love to kind of see who's here watching us live in the chat. If you're here on Zoom, I just like 130, 140 of you here. Go ahead and let me know in the chat. What grade are you guys in? Are you in ninth grade? 11th, uh, 10th grade, 11th grade, any seniors here, right? Maybe have senior parents of younger kids as well too. And always want to see how things are seniors. We have some com maybe community college students. Maybe we have some middle school families. I actually talked to a lot of middle school families past week too. So I'm pretty sure they're just looking there. They're around as well too. And Facebook, if you're here, go ahead and drop it in the chat. So I know you guys are here. If you're watching it live or watching the replay of this, let me know the grades there too. Right, so I'm seeing the chat. Lots and nice little mix today. Lots again, very disproportionate eleventh grade, <laughs> disproportionate eleventh grade for sure. But we do have tens. We do got nines. We got an eighth in here as well. But yes, definitely a lot of elevens. Let's go, juniors. Right, junior. Oh, we got sixth grader. We got sixth grade as well too. Beautiful, beautiful. So, um, if you're new here, every single week we go live. We teach you some incredible stuff in this group. It's a very, if it's a very first time meeting. What's up? My name is Coach Tony. I'm actually a former UC Berkeley admissions reader turned college admissions coach. Uh, when I was a reader at Berkeley, I actually helped read the application. You're like, what's a reader? I saw that comment come through. What's a reader? Right? A reader. So again, when you guys are applying to schools, again, this past cycle, right? This this month, and we're still waiting for Berkeley's decision to come out. But all the other schools, right? They've been coming out, and you, and then you're seeing like. Those got in, those didn't get in. Those were the decisions of those were based on also the rec the readers at the schools, right? You see the UC specifically, and all schools do this too. So I don't think it's just the UCs. All schools do this, is that they have so many applications, right? The UCs, I think on average, each school has 100,000 applicants at every single UC for only so many spots, right? So, but if you look at each of the admission, admission offices, they only have 20 or 30 team members. So how can they read that many apps? They can't. So what they do is all the schools, not just the UCs, but UCs, privates, out-of-states, Ivies, all the schools across the board, they bring on a team of readers at each of the schools. And the readers are trained, this is what we're looking for. This is a yes. This is a no. That's what I did at Berkeley for a few years, understanding what a yes is, what a no is, and actually pulling into action. I read over 20,000 applications during my time there, I started to really understand like, oh, look, the yes kids have this in common. The no kids have this in common. And then that's kind of how this group uh, and this program was kind of built as a reason, as a byproduct of that. Like it's understanding like, hey, a lot of things people think are important actually is not that important. And things that people don't know is important. They're ignoring that, right? So it's one of those, um, like I mentioned, if you're watching this live, uh, it is the end of March, which means a lot of schools have already released. A lot of the UCs have already released a lot of their decisions. We're still waiting for Berkeley. I think later this week, we, we should find the, the Berkeley decisions, which again, once we get that, we'll have a, another clean sweep, nine out of nine again this year, which is, we're super proud of that. You say it was the last batch, a bunch of our students gone to UCLA. So I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of like kind of disappointing, frustrating news from other folks. Our kids are doing great, so, so, so I'm super pumped that way there. So when it comes to uh, the reading process and, the, and seeing things, right, there's things that are important and things that's not as important too. So kind of speaking very broadly, and again, today's topic is going to be about your PIQ. So juniors, perfect topic for you because this is right around the corner. For everyone else, you're like, why? Why do I got to join this topic so early, right? I'm sure in the chat, let me know. I, guys, I, it's not it's, you guys, how hard is talking to a camera to your own face right here. So let me know in the chat, right? Anyone here interested in us uh, summer programs, right? Maybe you're thinking about doing something, not maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe a future year. Summer programs right there, yes, in the chat, right? Maybe internships. Anyone here interested in internship? Drop the yes as well, too. Internship opportunities. And... 
scholarships, right? Who who can say no to free money, right? Who here is thinking about applying to scholarships? May I want to apply to scholarships as well, right? And lots of yeses down the line. And the reason why I name drop these, there's lots more too, but the reason why I name drop these is the writing style of the college applications is the exact writing style of all these as well. Right, so that's 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 kind of the little spoilers for you guys. Uh, if you stay to the end, that you'll understand kind of what and why. And another big spoiler for you guys: if you do what your English teacher tells you, you're gonna be in a very bad situation. So that's the other kind of teaser there. So with that being said, let's jump straight in. So again, today we're gonna play it up. If you've been following, actually, real quick, little poll. I'd love to kind of see who's here joining us live. Again, we're up to 160 people here live in our Zoom and dozens more in the Facebook group. Who is it their first call here? Type the number one in the chat. If it's your very first time, you're like, holy moly, this Coach Tony guy's yelling at me on the screen. It's my first time, <laughs> drop a one in the chat. And if you've been here for a very long time, drop a two. You'll be like, ah, oh, Coach Tony, I've seen him weeks or months. Some of, our some of our families for years, right? So some of our OGs who've been here with us for years now uh, as well. There you go. Nice, nice, nice little mix. Lots of new folks and some old folks. A lot of familiar names I'm seeing in the chat as well, too. Super, super awesome. So again, if you're if you're new here, welcome. Hope you guys enjoyed these sessions. For everyone returning, you guys know we like to do little presentations. Um, I never actually like those. I never actually like those. For me, I like starting with a blank doc. Let's talk about it. Let's. This is my little notes from pre, pre, pre the call. But let's talk about this, right? Let me go screen share. Not screen share. Uh, scroll in a little bit. Let me know if that is too small. You want a bigger. Because if not, I can't see, but it looks great. I'm, I have a massive screen. So it looks, looks, always looks good on my screen. So let's talk about it, right? So today we're going to talk specifically on how to write your PIQs, more specifically how to write like a personal statement, a personal like a writing prompt, right? So let's talk high level first. So it's from a first, from a theory uh, point of view, right? Because I got to always teach you guys, here's why, where this kind of fits in the whole big puzzle. When it comes to admissions, right? There's three factors that's really important, right? Fact number one, it's going to be academics. Factor number two is activities. Factor number three is the application itself. These are the only three factors that you really care about. Anything else does not matter, right? Today, we're going to focus on this. We're going to focus on the application itself, right? So that's that. So when it comes to the application itself, keeping in mind a little more theory for you guys, right? Uh, and for maybe a little, little poll for those who have been, those who wrote twos who've been here a while, right? Are these three areas equal, right? Right? Are these three sections equal to each other? Let me know in the chat, guys. Let me know in the chat if these um, are they equal? Are these areas equal, right? Or like equally important is the kind of the, the biggest thing as well. Someone says, I cannot see. Can someone confirm or deny <laughs> if you can or cannot see uh, here? Yes, no. Uh, but uh, I, I think you should see. I think uh, I see it. See, we see fine. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So are these equally important? The answer is... No, <laughs> these are not equally important. The biggest thing to understand is that the academics is important, but it is the least important of the entire categories. This is why, again, by the way, we've been getting a lot of emails. And again, for a lot of our senior families, right, who are like, I'm not sure why my child isn't getting in. We get a lot of those emails right now. Send them to me. I will, I'm happy to explain the best of my ability, my thought on why you didn't guys didn't get in as well. Just get to foreclosure closure and peace of mind right and for a lot of these families who said that they always start up the email as my child is a four point big number right <laughs> big number gpa took all the, the the crazy all all the things as well too and then i'm like oh well red, red flag number one right if you guys know coach tony does not care about your gpa <laughs> So that's probably the one of the first thing when people start with their GP, I'm like, okay, you're looking at the wrong factor right away from the very beginning. So again, that's not the most important thing. So it's the academics, least important factor. Activities is the most important 9th, 10th, 11th, right? So when it comes to your academics, this is uh, not, not activities, your activities, right? You should, this should be your main focus, 9th, 10th, 11th grade itself, right? But when it comes to the whole process as a whole, the most important thing 
is going to be your application. This is why, again, people let me know in the chat, if this, you guys see this, it might not be you, but you might see us online. I'm sure if you were part of here, you're part of other like groups and the communities as well too. You're seeing families share that like, my child, crazy GPA. My child, crazy resume. My child didn't get in. Let me know if you have seen that comment at least once, twice, thrice. I see that so many times every single day. People have seen that. Yes, right? You're saying, hey, I have strong academics. I am see, I have strong teammates, but I don't get in. And here's the one thing to keep in mind, one to think about, right? Did you ever see their applications online? Right? And for a lot of families, no. <laughs> they brag about the academics. They brag about the activities but they never talk about their application. And when it comes to the admissions process, the application is the most important part of the entire process itself. So keeping that in mind, that, that's like a quick little theory. So let, let's, uh, let's, let's go ahead and jump into the application itself, right? So when it comes to the application itself, there's a few components, right? Let's talk about UC application. Again, this is a UC group. We do help with all schools, but let's talk about UC application now. So UC applications, right? Let's talk some high level things you guys know. These apps will open August 1st. So starting on August 1st, you can go ahead and go into the portal, create an account. Actually, you can create an account now if you want to. It'll just reset at the new year, right? At uh, the new like term, right? August 1st, right? But you can go in, create an account. August 1st is when it comes out. The deadline, the due date is November 30th, right? So you have until November 30th to submit your application. Some UCs might actually have a deadline post this, but don't trust that. November 30th should be the main deadline for anyone, everyone. For students in our, I know we have some of our coaching families here to give you our juniors a heads up, our, our class of 2025 upcoming seniors. We have our own internal deadline for you all, November 1st, right? And that's the date that we're going to get you have done with all your apps, all the UCs, uh, so you're ready to submit then as well too. Right, so keep in mind, if you guys want to steal our internal deadline, go for it. I definitely recommend it. That way, your child can enjoy their Thanksgiving break and for all the other breaks as well, too. Right, So that's the big thing to keep in mind. On the application itself, on the application itself, there's going to be a few sections on your app. The first section is the personal information, right? I shouldn't need to help students with this section. It's about their name, their address, their phone number, all the basic information as well, too. There is, and we want to disclaimer this as well, because everyone always asks about it. And we're like, no, blah, blah, blah. There is a demographic page on there. At the very top, they say this will not be used in admissions. And then some people refuse to believe that and say, no. I'm not going to put it in because uh, whatever reason, whatever reason that they want to think about there, right? This truly is for demographic purposes only. California, again, people have talked about, again, one of the things I hear a lot around this season or the pe people play the, the blame game, right? It's because of race. It's because of gender. All these races, all these things as well, too. If you guys want to do a little quick history lesson, right, in California, right, back... In 1996, look up Proposition 209, right? California back in 996, Proposition 209. Uh, basically, the firm actually you guys saw in 2003, 2023 that affected all schools. California already had is back in 996. We're going on almost 18 years of this array as well, too. So demographic information will not be considered. As a reader, I did not see any of this information on the apps itself. Right, so keeping the keep that in mind there, right? So it's Chewy data, and again, this is when you guys look go online and look up data. That's what this is used for. Is pretty much it, right? So the first section is a personal information. Again, you don't really need our help with that. That's pretty much like tell me about you, right? Uh, the next section is the colleges plus majors. So for the UC campus, there's nine incredible UCs. You use one application to apply to all nine. On the one app, you can specify how many schools you want to apply to. One, two, three, four, up to nine UCs available, right? When you're applying to each of the nine UCs, they will give you two options of majors, your main major of choice and your alternate major there, right? Um, this is a whole separate topic. It requires a whole call in itself. Last week, Coach Art actually went live and talked about the impact of majors on college apps. So if you need that, 
drop the word majors somewhere in the chat comment somewhere so our team can grab it for you um, as well. But yeah, and different talk, different day. But just letting you know, that's what the next section is going to be, right? Colleges, your main major and your alternate major there, right? And if you guys want me to do a training on that, we'll do a training in these next few weeks about that as well too, right? So that's that. Next thing after that is the academic section, right? It's going to ask you to share all of your academics, all the classes you took at the high school level and at the college level, right? Those who've been following me for a long time, you guys know I'm a huge proponent of dual enrollment. Love, 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 love dual enrollment. One of our big strategies that we implement, one of those cheat codes that we have seen that works so well. A lot of high school counselors, no, we would not put on your high school transcripts. And this is exactly the reason why I tell them, I do not care what you do with your high school transcripts because the colleges will recognize it. The colleges will see that the UCs will acknowledge that you did take these college classes. So that's the thing there. Uh, after that, they'll ask you for uh, scores, right? So if you took any AP exams, use tend to scores there. IB exams, if you guys are doing any international, international exams, you can do that as well too. Uh, some of you guys... Uh, uh, have like need to do the like the TOEFL, the Eiffel, some of you guys from other countries, the GCSZ and all these other ones. That's all here, right? UCs are like not acknowledge that, right? UCs are test blind. What does that mean? They do not care about your SAT or ACT test scores. Let's say you got a perfect score. That's nice. They're not going to care about that. Let's say you got a zero. That's nice too. They do not care about it. Big, big, big rule. Do not slip it into your college application. Think about it. The UCs are a very reputable school. They want students to listen <laughs> to them, right? If they tell, and they will say this on the app, do not write your test scores. Imagine if someone told you not to do something and you do it anyways, does that make you look like a strong candidate, right? I was, I was, so we have some seniors every year that's like, can I slip it in? Like, it's like, share it a little bit i'm like they told you explicitly do not share it it's one of those like when they say do not do don't do again i'm all for like bending rules right? i'm all for like there are tricks i'll show you today also there are tricks you can we can do and do with this but this is one of the things do not share on your app because it truly means nothing uh as well too so that's that after your academics so that's the high school stuff after your there's activities right when it comes to activities there's 20 slots there's 20 slots that you can add activities. Are do you need to fill it all up? No. Should you? I recommend it. I recommend filling up all 20 slots. So again, this is one of those. If you are, if you are one of the younger families here, you're not a junior, you're like a sophomore, a sophomore, a ninth grader, eighth, seventh, or sixth graders, right? Perfect call for you guys. Now you know here's what the end's gonna be. Time to work backwards. Hey, how can I fill up my 20 slots? Again, don't have the mentality, but that's kind of how you want to think about. You want to maximize that section there, right? 20 activity slots. The most important thing is not what you want. It's how you share it. Again, this is probably a different topic. I believe Coach R is going to do a training on this specifically in the next few weeks. So hang on tight for that. He'll break this down specifically for you guys there. And the main point of today's conversation, the last section after that is the personal insight questions. This is what they call the PIQs, right? Personal insight questions. You can think of it as the four you see, and then I keep putting in quotes, right? The quote unquote essays, right? And then again, you'll see in a bit why I keep putting in quotes this entire time. But these are the four you see uh, essays that they, they ask you to write. So there's four, you actually get eight topics to choose from, to choose from, and uh, you pick four of your choice. Literally does not matter which four you pick. They've done so many studies. There's no one that's better than the other. We'll talk about how to pick the four in a little bit as well too, but there's eight, you pick four. Uh, there's a 300 word limit on each of them, right? So you can't write more than 350 words each. That's it, right? That's, it. that's, that, that's, that's pretty much like the rules of things to understand, right? Uh, really quick, I'm seeing here that people are dropping questions. Drop it in the Q&A box. I'm going to Miss it because I, I, I know so far our, our, our chat goes fast with stuff. So drop any and all questions in the Q&A. We'll do Q&A at the very end. All right. So with the UCPIQs, let's break it down. Let's talk about PIQs, right? Again, that's, that's why we're here today. Really quick pause, though. Are you guys liking the training so far? Say yes in the chat. Yeah, this is so far good to go. You guys are learning something. We are hashtag learning. 
Yes. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Let's break down the PIQs, right? So I, I copied them because I was like, it's going to take free forever. I don't want to waste your time as well, too. So these are the PIQ questions from this last school year. So I, I specified that as well, too. The reason why I specified that is, again, the, could this year change? So juniors, could this current juniors, upcoming seniors, could this change? Every year, potentially, yes. Realistically, no. <laughs> no, no, no. UCs, you, you'll learn. I've done this again. You guys are going through this for the first time. Some of you parents are going for the second time, maybe third or fourth for some of you parents with multiple kids, right? I've gone through this, this journey 15 years worth doing this. And before that, helping more students before that as well too. I've seen this. These questions don't really change. I think in my span doing this, it has changed one time, right? Total, right? In the span like 15, 20 years. One time total that it made a switch. That's it. But it's never changed ever since. So again, and then this, the UCs like these questions. So they're not going to really change it too much there. So I'm um, bold prediction, bold prediction, 2024, 2025, same exact questions as well too for the PIQs. Let's break it down, right? So question number one is going to be an example of your leadership experience where you influence others, resolve disputes, contribute to group efforts over time. Again, if you have a leadership opportunity, incredible. Right. Number two, every person has a creative side. It can be expressed many ways. Problem solving, original, innovative thinking, artistically, to name a few. Describe how you express your creative side for those artist artistic uh, students. Right. Students who love the arts, the music, the theaters. Right. This might be something you guys want to consider. Right. Also, by the way, a lot of our kids in the coding realm like to use this one as well, too, because then that is some creativity, too. Right. Number three, what is your greatest time or skill? How have you developed and demonstrated this talent over time? Great one to show progress, progression of things. Number four, how have you taken advantage of a significant educational opportunity or work to overcome an educational barrier you faced? Right. And this actually, if you, think, if you look at this question, there's actually two questions here. Right. So this is one of those like, Pick whichever, pick, pick which prompt is better for you, right? Number five, most significant challenge you have faced, steps to overcome, how is it affecting your academics? This is a very, very, very typical prompt that a lot of anyone, by the way, not just UCs, a lot of private schools ask this, scholarships ask this a lot, programs ask this a lot, because they, they want to see how you battle adversity, right? So that's a very typical concept of a question. Number six, uh, describe a subject that inspires you. Describe how you first interest inside, outside your classroom. Again, if you're interested in a certain field, if you know I'm going to be doing this major, right? You can talk about it, right? How, how do you know you want to do this? You can talk about that there. Number seven, what have you done to make your community or school a better place? If you found a need to take action on your school or your community, right? Maybe that's a good prompt. And number eight, right? Beyond what has been shared in your application, what makes you a strong candidate for the application for admissions to the UCs, right? So this is like kind of a catch-all question, right? Tip number one, right away, right? I'm going to go ahead and the UCPIQ uh, tips and math and uh, strategies for you guys, right? Tip number one, I'm gonna use the, I, I would like this, right? Tip number one, try to avoid <laughs> number eight, coaching students in our program. I would not let you do number eight. It's, it's, just, it's just a heads up, unless, okay, caveat, caveat. This last year, um, we have we had our college app in tennis. So any of our juniors who are available here, Every summer, we do a, we do a really cool event. Uh, it's called our College App Intensive. It's a two-day weekend workshop where we help you start and finish your entire college applications in a span of two days. In crazy, intense, but it's amazing as well, too. A lot of our kids love it. Uh, if you join our live uh, calls yesterday, we interviewed Harish and Maggie, two of our coaching students. Both of them. Un unscripted, unprompted, they actually bragged about the intensive weekend being a key component of them getting their apps done and getting to the schools that they did as well too, right? So during that weekend, this past year, 2023, right? I had one student that for the first time in decades, right? I was like, you're a number eight. That you are the one that I'm like, yes, you should write a number eight. But for most people, however, Right. For most people, no, <laughs> your life is not that special that you should do a number eight. Number eight is too broad. I think that's the issue. Of number eight is too big, too broad. You can probably use any other prompts to make it work. So I definitely do not recommend number eight for most people. Right. Unless 
maybe you are very, very unique. Let me know. And um, I'm usually like, nope, the other problems are better, right? Because that's usually what happens. Again, the student that we worked with, uh, truly, holy moly, all the coaches that were there live, we were like unanimously, you got to write number eight because number eight was like, so you, right? So it's that. But again, for most of you guys, 99% of people I've met and I work with thousands of students, like that was the one rare student in a very long time. I recommend number eight. Everyone else, avoid number eight. Don't do that, right? Now, next one, right? So the, the other big tip when it comes to the UCPIQ process is right now, right? You guys are probably going to think about these. Uh, you guys are probably thinking about um, the prompts, right? Again, right, right now in the chat, you, I, as I read this, if you're the student, you're like, oh, yeah, that one's good. That one's good. Parents, you're like, oh, yeah, my child uh, is so creative, right? Two is going to be on our list for sure, right? So you're thinking about these prompts. One of my biggest tips I tell everyone, do not start with the prompts at all, right? Don't start with the prompts, right? And I usually again, why, right? So why, why not start with the prompts? The issue with that is as you do that, you pigeonhole yourself into certain situations. Maybe there was a stronger story. Maybe there's something else that the reader could have learned about you, but because you kind of locked yourself into these prompts, you eliminate the potential for those things to happen. So what I tell students all the time, do not start with the prompts. Instead, start with your stories. That's the key, right? That is the most important thing. You start with sharing who you are. And so when it comes to this section right here, let's, let's talk, spend like a minute or two talking about this, right? So when it comes to like picking your stories, right? The best example I can think of, um, quick poll in the chat, right? Has anyone here watched Loki, the TV show? Marvel, Loki. It's a yes in the chat. No, if you haven't in the chat. All right. Got a mix. Got a mix. Got yeses and noes, right? Got yeses and noes. So uh, for those who say yes, you'll get it. For those who say no, you got to watch the show. It's a great show. Uh, but the idea behind it is that there's a lot of, um, there's things that you do in your life, right? So your life right here, imagine my hair, look at me, right? You're going down your life right here. Let's say you didn't do something that you actually did. That means potentially your life could have went a different direction, right? That's kind of how I think. So for example, for example, right? Think of something, think of an activity that your child does and they love, right? So for some of you playing soccer, right? Oh, my child kicked the soccer ball. That's how they're now playing varsity soccer. Hey, my child joined this one club. As a result, now they're on track to be president. Hey, my child clicked the keyboard and now they're programming X, Y, and Z. That action, imagine now they never did that. Imagine that student never kicked the soccer ball. Imagine this other student, I forgot my scenario with the other student, but this other student never joined that club. Imagine this student never touched that computer. The question is how different would life be? And for those who watch Loki, it's, it's that uh, variant, right? You're creating the variants of yourself, right? That are doing different things. So what I think about, what I tell students, right? Is that when you start thinking about this process, when you're sharing, hey, what do I want to talk about to the readers, right? Think of the stories that would have made you into a completely, completely different person if you did, didn't do that thing, right? So that's kind of, kind of a very broad thing to say, right? But I'll, I'll do a personal example. Actually, really quick pause. It is 6.30. Usually these calls go 30 minutes. Is that okay? I go like 10 extra minutes, guys. Permission to go extra 10 extra minutes to finish this up real fast. Yes in the chat. Yes is in the chat. If I can go an extra 10, 15, 10 minutes, probably not. I think 10 minutes is all I need to, to finish this up. Yes, awesome. Cool. All right. So uh, for me, let's talk about me, right? So for me, Coach Tony, here's a Coach Tony example, right? Real life now into my life. Some of you, those who've been with me a long time, you guys know this, right? So for me, I love math. <laughs> I love math. I actually wanted to be a math teacher. So those, those who knew, knew me, I, I did all the math classes, want to be a math teacher. I'm really big on math, right? Specifically math tutoring, right? I, actually, math tutoring, right? That, that's actually one of the things that I actually a really big part of my, who I am. I tutored math in, in high school as one of them. Another thing that I did was leadership, right? I was leadership. Those people don't believe me. I'm actually really an introvert, like le legit people, our team who knows me, hangs out with me. I'm pretty quiet <laughs> as well too. I'm just loud here. You guys think I'm loud here, but I'm actually super quiet. 
very introverted. So leadership though is kind of one of the things that kind of got me out of my shell. Like that kind of showed me, hey, you like you you you're actually decent at talking to people, right? It's not as well too. I did something called the Explorers Program, right? So those of you guys may have heard of this. Uh, it's like Boy Scouts, but not Scouts. It's like the Scouts with the police officers, right? So it's basically like a scouting program in law enforcement. It's the best analogy of that. Some of you guys may have heard of it. If not, look into it. It's actually a pretty cool program. Um, pretty intense though. Pretty intense, pretty cool. Uh, they, they put you to boot camp. I got pepper sprayed. I get, had a dog bite me with like the, the thing on my arm. It was crazy. It was like boot camp, running 5 a.m. It was amazing. Looking back, one well, of my best experiences in my life, in the moment, one of the worst experiences in my life, right? So that's another one. And then I was one something that I did a lot. I did a lot of mm, I did martial arts a lot, right? I was a I was a I was a black belt as well too. That was also super cool. So for me, these are when you think about stories, right? That like if I never did this again, math. Math was always really, really big for me growing up, right? Growing up in math, I kept doing a lot of math. My grandparents, my parents, they, they, none of them went to college, but they were like, hey, school, 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 school. And then again, they couldn't help me with English classes because they don't speak English, <laughs> but they could always help me with math. They're actually pretty good at math. So math was always ingrained in me. And I actually kind of had really good mentors who kind of kept me going in math in that direction as well, too. So again, I became a tutor, but it's a big story behind tutoring as well, too. And we'll, we'll talk about maybe this call, maybe next call as well, too, there. But then that's that. Leadership, I told you guys, that made, made me kind of more outgoing of who I was. The Explorers program literally taught me never to give up. It's one of those big things. Like, I feel like I've always quit stuff early, right? But that program always taught me to go through the end. Make it through first, then you can do whatever you want after that, right? So that's, that's a good one. Same thing with martial arts, right? That's also the leadership. It's also the perseverance. The black belt, those of you guys in martial arts, you guys know. It's just fun breaking boards, kicking faces, but it's hard. It's, it's definitely really hard uh, throughout there as well, too. And I think if I never did each of these things, I would not be the person I am today. And that's when you're trying to figure out your, your topics, right? What things would you do or wouldn't you do that wouldn't make you the same person you are today? That's when you start thinking of topics, that's what you want to start with, right? Something else, if you may or may not have observed this, right? Look at tutoring, leadership, martial arts, uh, and the Explorers program. I kind of mixed it, right? Explorer program. Is there any overlap? Does anyone see any overlap with any of these activities, right? And the answer is no, by the way. <laughs> there, there's no overlap. And that's one of the big things, right? What a lot of people like to do they're like, oh, I love math. I took a lot of math classes. Hey, I love. I did math tutoring um, as well too. You know what? I also did this math club at my school. Um, and I did martial arts, right? As well too. But you see how three of these are already about math, right? From a can you do this? You can. There's no right or wrong to how you do this. From a reader's point of view, this is going to be a missed opportunity for me because again, what can I learn from these areas that I haven't learned already from this first one? That's usually how the takeaway is. Again, can it be unique and different? Of course it can, right? It depends on how you write it. But for the most part, you'll see that we intentionally tell our students to try to keep these as separate as possible, right? These are all separate aspects of you. So when you, and then, and here's the best, kind of the best analogy is that if they're reading these independently, it should feel like four different people, right? So, they're read together, so don't think they're read differently. They're all read together. But imagine if they read each prompt separately, right? Because some students like to theme, right? I hate that word theme, right? Just theme all these together. No, don't do that. Do not, no theme. No theme, <laughs> right? No theme, no universal thing. No, don't do that. any of that, right? These four should stand separate from each other. So by the time you read them together, you're like, whoa. This, these are four incredible people. Surprise, it's one person. That's the kind of the impact you want to create when it comes to these types of prompts here, right? So step one, don't start with the prompt. Actually start with your stories. Identify your stories first, right? After you have your stories, after your, 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 top, no, no, sorry, your topics, right? We call it story time. We call it story time for our students, right? So story time means when I said math tutoring, there's a story in my head that just popped up, right? When I said, when you told me leadership class, boom, 
I had a story of that just something happened in my head that popped up. Explorers, I got pepper sprayed. That's, that's literally the story that I always see that as well too. Martial arts, I lost in a tournament so bad as well too. I got kicked in the face like so many times. Didn't get knocked out, but kicked in the face so many times. Right? So that's that, right? So each of these, I have like a unique story to them, right? So we tell our students story time, right? Right? So what we usually have as students, we got 15 minutes, Stream of consciousness, right? Consciousness, consciousness, right? I don't care. Don't stop. Just keep writing. Right, 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 right. You're going to have like half a page, a page of context, right? Now, after you write, right, cut it down to 30%, right? We don't really care about the story. That's what most people go wrong. By the way, a little, a little teaser for you guys. This is where most people go wrong with this, you do not want to focus mainly on the story because that's not what you're talking about, right? Because again, think about this way, right? Really fast in the chat, I'll, I'll prove my point. How many of you guys, your kids going to talk about math or tutoring? Like your kids done math or done tutoring? Let me know in the chat, say yes. If like, oh yeah, that, they, my kid could do, say, could, right? This is a could, I'm not saying they are, but could, right, as well too. Got some no's. We got some yeses, right? So yeah, that's that. Number two, leadership, or let's say a club. Let's make it broad, right? Is your kid going to talk about a club at their school, right? Let me know yes or no. If that a club is, the, is something that's like really big for them. Yes, yes and no's, right? Now we have uh, a program. Let's call this like outside school program. So not in your school, but a program. Let's keep it broad, keeping it broad, right? Is Are you, your kids going to talk about a program that they done outside their school? I got some yeses, some no's as well, too. And last one is a sport. Let's call it a sport, right? Who he's going to talk about? The kid is like an athlete that they may talk about a sport on their thing. I got some yeses, some no's here as well, too. But the takeaway is we're all saying the same thing, right? Look, if I talk about tutoring, you're going to talk about tutoring. If I talk about a club, you're going to talk about a club. So what makes my club better than your club? What makes my tutoring better than your tutoring, right? You can't. You can't compete on stuff like that, right? That's why we don't care about that. We focus it on 30%. So if you guys want to do a quick math, right? 350 words, 30% is like 100, right? 100 words max about the story, right? That's it, right? After you have that, after after story time, right? And I'm, I'm going a little faster, by the way. I, I promised 640, so I'm going to try to finish in two minutes, right? After story time, what you want to do after that is you want to go ahead and two things. Right? Answer the prompt. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I lied. After you have story time, actually, I lied. Hold on. Hold on. I'm confused, you guys. Going back. Going back. Not yet. Not yet. Don't, don't cut yet. Don't cut yet. Don't cut yet. Before going back, go fast. Story time. Stream content. Now, pick your prompt. I apologize. I skipped a step. Right? You got to pick your prompt now. So, again, you're telling a story. Right? You're telling a story like, oh, I did uh, martial arts. I kicked in the face. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Now, I told that story. Now, going back here. Now, you go ahead and pick. Okay, which of these am I able to talk about my game kicking the face? One, right? Uh, boom, maybe this one, maybe greatest talent, right? Maybe three, um, maybe five. Kicking the face is a very significant challenge, right? Five, um, that's it. Three or five, right? Three or five of my potential choices. And you kind of narrow it on that way. Once you have all four, you pick it out. Which one do you want to use for each one? You can only use each prompt one time. Right, so keep that in mind too. So let's say I want to do number five, right? What's the most significant challenge you face? Get kicked in the face is the most significant challenge, right? Now, right, I'm going to cut my prompt down knowing that I'm going to talk about that, right? Cut down to 100 words. Once you cut down to 100 words, right, two things now. You're going to answer the prompt, right? So I'm going to answer the prompt now. So this prompt talked about what? Number five is describe the most significant challenge I have faced. I probably talked about that in the story because, again, I knew I was going to talk about that prompt, right? Now, I want to talk about the steps I have taken to overcome that. I want to add that section in. I'm also going to talk about how it's affected my academic achievement. Little teasers. What if it didn't, right? Do I skip this question? Pop quiz. Pop quiz. If, my, let's say, martial arts did not affect my academics, do I just skip this question? Yes or no? Yes or no in the chat. There's no wrong answers. No wrong answers. The only wrong answer is not answering. <laughs> answer is no. That's correct. You don't skip anything. You say, this did not affect my academic. As a reader, I am filtering for these answers. 
make our lives easy, right? So you tell them this did not affect my academics there, right? So you're gonna answer, answer the prompt. And the most important thing, here's a little cheat code for you guys. What we tell our students to do, you also answer, why did you do what you did? Also answer, how did that make you who you are? Answer, who have you become as a result? Because here is the biggest takeaway of all, right? I was a math tutor in high school. Right? I did love math. Did I tutor in college? Yes or no, guys? Did I tutor in college? It's like a life. It's like only I know the answer. I did. So uh, yes, I did. I did tutor in college. <laughs> but was I a math major though? I, I, I want to be a math teacher. Was I a math major though? No, <laughs> did not. I, I, I switched out. I switched out of math, right? So I did not make a major. I did leadership in high school. Did I do student government or did I do leadership in college? The answer again is no. Right? Explorers, did I do any law enforcement related thing in, in college or any physical thing? The answer is no, did not do that. Did I do martial arts? I did. I joined the Taekwondo team at the school, tweaked my knee, could not compete anymore. Therefore, I, I had stopped anyways, but I did. So out of my list, I did like half, total of a half or like 0.75, right? 0.75 of everything I kind of mentioned as well too. Because the takeaway is this, the biggest takeaway of all, what you do in high school, does not matter. What you do in high school does not tell the readers what you'll do at the college. However, I loved math. I loved tutoring. I loved helping people. That I my, my prompts, if I read them today, was about me helping people. When I went to Berkeley, I joined a bunch of organizations where I was able to help other students, right? Leadership, right? I didn't join student government, but I was a natural leader. All the orgs that I was in while I was at Berkeley, I got position in leadership. I ended up as the biggest leadership position I can, fi I can find as the executive director of the largest uh, student of color organization on Berkeley campus, overseeing a budget of like half a million dollars. It was insane, right? Explorers program. I did not do that, but I've learned to not give up and not quit. I have a really funny story. I'm not, not today, but I'll tell you eventually as well too, of like literally not quitting who I am, I'm, I'm born not to quit. Martial arts, keep pushing, right? Keep pushing, doing what you gotta do as well too. The stuff doesn't matter, but the takeaways is the key. When it comes down to the reading process, I care about this. That's what I care about, not the thing that you did, right? It's the, it's the, the who you are as a person. That's the big key. All right. Who wants a free gift, guys? Who wants a, who wants a, who wants a free gift? If it's your first time here, you guys know our team loves giving out free information, free stuff as well, too. One of the things I want to give you guys today, one of our most requested things every single year, this is our UC application workbook. Let me know if you guys see this on your screen. Um, it's a really cool resource. This is actually uh, the, the workbooks we have. Those of you, by the way, someone asked about our two-day weekend. If you guys are coming, you guys will get this as well too. Actually, we work on, this is an actual doc we work off of, of your weekend workshop. But this, if you see, you make your own copy, right? Look at this. This is what I, what I tell you about what you asked about you, right? Let's go about you. This is literally every single question they ask you on, oh, look at that, 87 pages, scroll down real fast, right? About you, demographic information, parent information, campuses, right? Uh, what major, what campuses, your academic section, right over here. Where's your activities? Where's your activities? That was next, that was next. Oh, your IB scores, your AP scores, uh, the international exam. There's a GCSE I mentioned earlier. Your activities, right? We have activity tracker for you guys to add in of the things you do. Uh, scholarship area to add scholarship. Look at that, PIQs. Personal insight questions with all the eight prompts we talked about earlier today. We even teach you guys how to write these prompts. What did I tell you guys earlier, right? Where's the brainstorm, right? Brainstorm, what are the topics that made you you? Look at that. You brainstorm here, boom, 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 right? Then, right, what I say next, 30% story. Again, we're not making this up. We're not making this up. This is, this is all uh, in here as well too, right? Boom, now you're writing. 
you're riding your first draft set of your TXE one, two, three, whatever the, the four prompts are as well. Too. Then we start fixing it, right? We start fixing it. I didn't get this far. This is part where I stopped. We'll probably do a, a continuation of this call if you guys want to do that. We haven't got to round two yet. The, the, the dig deep part. Dig deep is, is, is the thing that Coach Art, one of our head coaches, he loves saying that. Uh, it's that's literally what we do, right? Dig deep as well, too, for that. And then you keep going. And the next revision is uh, more, round three. And then usually for our coaching students, we take them here all the way to round four. And then <laughs> all these as well, too. Really, really cool resource um, that, again, again, I don't think the app's going to change, right? This is last year's app. Would it change this year? It has always changed a little bit. So there's always like one or two questions that do get changed. But nothing significant to the point of like, oh, no, I can't use this. Uh, la like for example, last year, the new edition, so you guys knew uh, what it was. Last year, they added this section uh, to here. They moved it from down below. It used to be right before you submit, they asked that they just moved it up to the first page. That's literally it. That's, that's the big change from last year. So again, the UCs don't really do major changes. If they do, they'll give you a much big heads up as of today. No heads up from the UCs, meaning most likely things are not going to change too significantly there. Okay. So if you guys like this, give it out for you guys this week in our Facebook group. We'll go ahead and um, throw it in the Facebook group. You guys can go ahead and grab it, ask our team, and then we'll our team will grab it for you. All right. So that's that. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Uh, that's pretty much it for our training here today. I do have questions. I think we have 20 questions, 20 Q&A questions that we're going to stick around and answer. So those of you in Zoom, hang on tight. We're going to stick around. We have almost 200. If four people show up, we'd have 200. Now we're going down. 195. 195 now as well, too. Uh, those of you guys here, uh, stick around Zoom. Hang out. We're going to answer the questions right now for Facebook. Facebook friends, uh, thank you for joining guys today. If you guys want the replay with the Q&A, uh, I'll make a post tonight in like an hour of like, who wants the replay? And you say, me, I want the replay. And then our team will go ahead and send you the replay with the bonus Q&A at the very end. Okay. So Facebook, oh, if you guys, if I, a little, little, little pitch, little pitch right now. If I, I hope I can get a little 30 second pitch. If you guys want to attend our two day workshop, it is available. It's open right now. We're in 13 cities this year uh, with, and we're actually hosting them at college campuses for a few of them, which we're super excited for. We're going to be at, UC Irvine, UC Davis, UC Berkeley, USC. Those are the four confirmed college campuses that we're going to be at this summer. So if you guys want to go to those, right uh, weekend, right? Some keywords. Our team knows how to contact you about that. Um, is there, or just slide in my DMs, DM me after this call. We're going to go ahead and help you guys with that. If you guys want to see if we can work with our team, we are doing a price increase in April. So we can help you guys with the entire journey. Write the word book, slide in my DMs, write book write book in the comments. However you guys want to write book, we'll help you guys book a free 15 minute call. You can't buy anything on this call. We just want to see if we can help you guys out first. And if we can, we'll talk about programs. And if all's good, we'll get you guys in. We'll help you guys win big, just like all of our students have win one big so far with us. All right. Facebook, see you next time. See you next week. Um, Coach Art will be here next week. Teach you guys a really awesome topic. Zoom, hang on tight. We're going to go ahead and talk about some Q&A. All right. Zoom. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? All right. I'm going to run through Q&A really fast, by the way. I'm going to go super, super fast because uh, we, I, I, I have, we have another call at 7 o'clock. I'm trying to get as many as I can. So speed round. If I didn't fully answer your question, slide in my DMs. Our, our coaching family is able to you, by the way. Um, tag me in Discord, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll answer that as well, too. When you say application, does it mean the PIQs are most important? Grades and activities are part of the application, or you say the presenting that's important as well, too? Great question. So PIQ specifically of the app is, I will feel, the most important. Grades and activities are also important is how you share it. Academics pretty black and white. You can't really say much. There is an academic comment section. I forgot to mention this. My apologies for, for Facebook folks. Right There is an academic comments. That's something you can share there. When it comes to activities, it's how you share it is the big key right here too. Okay, so that's that um, there. When you say it doesn't matter what you do, it is why you do it. What do you mean? My kid is here to be his friends, see him as a good why. Again, we're humans, right? So he, let me flip the context a little bit. We're human, right? We do things for certain reasons, right? A lot of you guys are doing stuff for uh, some certain reasons as well too. If you want to think about it, status, you guys want to brag with your friends as <laughs> well too, right? There are reasons why we do what we do. But the thing is understanding the, the, the deeper reason why, hey, he wants to be your friends. Why? Why does he want to be with his friends? 
is the thing to understand, right? There is a deeper reason why low sporters, if the students are here, close your eyes, close your eyes, close your ears, uh, because this is the this is secret that we kind of help you work you towards. But the trick is when you ask yourself why hard enough, like this is the part I didn't get to on the call today, the dig deep part is that we keep asking you why. Why did you do this? Why that? Why this? Why this? How do we know you're at the end? Two ways. One, the final answer is the identity of who you are. That's option one, right? Option number two is that it's the emotion that you're running towards or you're running away from. That is what it always ends up being at the end of the day. So it's one of these two things. That's how you know I made it. This is where we want to go. Okay. If you self-learn language, is there a value taking an AP exam, especially you think you can score well? Do you get college credit? Take it. Take this exam. Doesn't hurt. Submit your scores. Uh, if you get a high enough score, you can get it, right? Three is passing. Three might not get you college credit. So that's that. Um, can they list national merit finalists are commended or leave off? Does it mean anything? Definitely add it national merit for those who don't know. PSAT, you score top. You you got top scores. Anything you do, share everything. Do not share. Don't not share anything. Always share everything on the application. What age do you recommend start with your program? As soon as as soon as you guys want, right? A lot of our students, uh, we accept students as young as sixth grade in our program. Um, and the cool thing about our programs, we do lifetime pricing. What does that mean? That means if you are six, seventh, eighth grade, ninth, sorry, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, whatever grade you want to start with us, we'll take care of you guys from there all the way to graduation, right? It's all the same price. So if you start as eleventh, tenth, ninth, you pay the same price. Eight, seven, six. And everything else, you still pay the same price. So it's for us, and the reason why is the sooner you start, I'd rather get you on track, keep you on track, rather than playing catch up with you junior year, which is again usually a lot more work for the students, stress on the parents, work for the coaches. So definitely, the sooner the better. Uh, book a free fifteen minute se session to see if we can work with our team. That's that. What's the best way to respond to a witness? You accept it and you're good there. You can't do much to those, by the way. So that's, that's it there. Can you provide sample descriptions of what they should look like? Coach R will be doing a training on this. Stay on the lookout. He'll do it next month. I don't know. I, I know we talked about it in April. I forgot which week, but he will do, he will have some sample ones who are perfect for you guys there too. Do you have sample PIQs? Good, good ones to look at. I do a training on this in April. So hang on tight. We'll actually break down good, bad ones. So you guys can see why good, why bad. As well, too. Should students skip SDs if blind for class 25? 100%. If it's blind, don't even think about it. Skip it, throw it away, uh, do something else with your time. It, something else is activities, by the way. Other friend consultants advice number six. Other consultant advice number when you're other friends consult advice number six when you are STEM because majors compare. Oh, that, I'm assuming PIQ answer number six. Do not care. I don't care. As long as you don't do number eight, that's all I care about. What well, any other number doesn't matter to me. So uh, our kids literally have done every other number. And not eight. <laughs> so I'll tell you, they'll be fine. Which are best for a school? Does not matter, right? It's based on you, not the school. The school does not care either, by the way. Right? So it's you. Do you sets have different focus? Not really, right? So they're all research-based schools. They're all really awesome. So you can't really go wrong anywhere there. Um, what is student right number eight? Cannot share that personal information, uh, but it was so unique and poor context. I have worked with thousands of students on a yearly basis. This was the one time I've ever seen this scenario, this story. And I was like, holy moly, put that on your number eight. And as well, too, I, I got follow up with him to see how he's doing. Why avoid number eight? We're told UC is OK. Even UC read it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm not saying you don't have to. Again, go for it. Do number eight. People do eight get into all the time. So I'm not, not saying like, hey, they don't get in. They do get in, right? Just like that. For us, our strategy, and this is the thing about like why I recommend, right? You don't mix two people's strategies together. For pick one, go that our coaching families are so successful because they stick with us. We say, don't do this. They say, okay, we'll do this. And we go with that. And as long as you follow it to the T, you should be good. The issue is when you start mixing stuff, right? So is it bad to not to do? No, you can definitely talk about number eight, right? It's, it's the most like flexible one of them all. The issue is it's so hard to stand out that way. Even though it's like a rhetorical, right? It's like, how do you stand out? It's so hard to stand out because again, it's so whatever you can say, you can probably use another prompt. I'm pretty sure like, like if I want to talk about this, you can use that other prompt to talk about it, right? So I think that's the thing. So it has to be a topic that like none of the other prompts can share. That's how I think eight will be really strong that way too. Can you share a document before the meeting ends? Coaching families, I'll send it to you guys after this call in Discord. Everyone else, wait for the replay. I'll have it on the, on the replay. You guys can tap that as well too. Uh, for me, examples, why, why, 
from your examples, write about what lesson you learned from each activity. Examples, write lessons, activity. Oh, I got you this one from the PIQ topics, right? So again, it's a story. So each, not a lesson, it could be a lesson, right? But it's like, what story do I want to share about that specific thing? Uh, me, I'm not sure what the me is for. Hopefully something, something good. Hopefully something good. Speaking of math, good website that can help you with digital SATs. We have our own product, by the way, if you guys are interested. I love rec recommending Magoosh Test Prep. Um, they're awesome, magoosh.com. We have a discount code with them. If you guys want it, slide in my DMs. I'll give you guys this discount code uh, with them as well too. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that's that. Can students use even from the early years from prom or just from high school compared to sport and change? No, high school only. Keep everything you're doing in high school only. You can you do earlier. You can. Re re readers don't recommend it either. So just keep it. Again, think about adults. Think about your life. Four years ago, even though it was only four years ago, you were a different person four years ago than you are today, right? So that's the, that's the analogy there. The, the link for the workshop. The link for the workshop, if you guys go to college app intensive, dot com college app intensive and put in chat real fast uh college app intensive dot com and you guys can go ahead and register there on your own coaching families uh go through discord for us we have a special link for you guys to book it but anyone else go ahead and use that link there you see that consider alternate major all the schools have it none of them really use it really though very few schools do because again most people don't make it to round two anymore is the thing there uh, do certain schools focus on certain traits like blah, blah? Not really. Yes, no. They're all a little different. But for me, I don't, we, don't, we don't tell our students to do that in any of their, uh, our, our students at all. Uh, can I have a Facebook group link? Yeah. Um, you see. Oh, 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 oh. You see admission secrets. I'm posting the chat again. Uh, I'm assuming that's what you meant by that. Sharing for the Explorer program. What length is it? No cost. There's no cost. We're volunteering. It is. Well, it's a bunch of volunteering hours. DM me after. We can talk about the Explorer's program uh, as well, too. What's the new price? We're increasing our prices by $1,000. We, we actually uh, settled on a new number because we're doing a lot of new things. You guys will see. Uh, I'll, I'll share it in April. Incredible. Amazing things we're doing. Um, and we're adding on to the program as well, too. So everyone who jumps in before April... You get locked into our old pricing. You guys are good to go. But anyone who joins after, new pricing. But you'll see it's like mind-blowingly good. A uh, lot of new enhancements, a lot of new opportunities, resources, AI. A lot of really cool things as well too there. My child never really faced challenges. You don't have to do challenges, right? And it doesn't have to be a challenge. You don't have to pick the challenge one either. And don't start with the, the problem. Start with your things. Then go back to that. If you have no challenges, don't do challenges, right? Price work it. If the price... For the application worksheet, can we pre-book next few years? It's a good question. The answer is no. You cannot pre-book the next few years. For real, the answer is because I I can't keep track of it. <laughs> is the real answer. Um, but it probably will go up a little bit. Last year was five hundred. This year was seven fifty. Um, we'll see. DM me. We'll, we'll we'll talk. We'll talk. Is it fine to embellish? No, do not embellish. <laughs> so her the tone should be uh interview hundred percent. No creative writing. That's absolutely correct as well, too. Do enrollment prep you for AP? No, they do not prep you for APs. Uh, for IVs with 35, ST 1500, will that help you? Definitely. That's, those are good scores. Submit them. Don't, don't try to retake them again uh, for 35 and 5500. Identity decided to coach it. Can you mention 100%? Anything you share in your app, they, readers will consider that. Do all your activities need to converge and major? No. If you joined our call yesterday, Harish and oh, actually Maggie's, most of her, half her activities were, half her activities she shared, it wasn't related at all. So definitely don't do that. During the weekends, come with the draft. Yes, you come with the draft leading up to the weekend. We help you with your rough draft to get your rough draft done. You show up, we'll get you, you'll leave with your final things done as well too. Will the coaches be helping at the workshop? Yes. Yes. It's all, it's all, all collegeappintensive.com. As well, too. How much does top two two five, for example, Olympiad help UCLA? Amazing. Share it, right? It's context that other people are not two two five, rank two two five. So share that. How much revenue to be top level EC? Most people don't even start businesses, right? So, so share that as well, too. Have you worked with the homeschoolers? We have I spoke at a homeschool conference every year. I get invited to the California Homeschool Association. I'm the the the, the college admission speaker. Um, we may have met, we may have not met. 
slime my DM. We'll talk after that. Let's call as well, too. For the weekend, we'll be running all the PQs there. Pre-work. The pre-work is going to be done. Leading up to the, the event, you need to get your drafts done. It takes you, I think we did the math, takes you four to eight hours before the event to get your, your pre-work done. You show up, we get the rest of the things done that weekend there, right? Man, that was speed, speed, speed round. Pleasure challenge, you guys. Hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. I'll see you guys. Uh, we'll, our team will accept your Facebook in a little bit, right? Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Coaching students, I'll see you guys soon. Everyone else, I'll see you guys next week. Catch soon.